is January 26, 2021, database management system, uh, relational database model. So out of different types of database model we studied earlier, like uh, how many types of database models we discussed about earlier. Anyone can answer any one of any of them? So there was hierarchical model, right? There was flat file system. There was network model. There was entity model. There were object-oriented database models, right? Out of them, uh, relational database model was the most prevailing. So here it's the really evolution of relational database model. In 1970, EF Corp published a paper uh, who was working at Oxford, uh, sorry, he was educated in Oxford and working at IBM. So a relational database model of data for large shared data banks defined a relational model based on mathematical shared theory or relational algebra. So there's one mathematical uh, terms or mathematical thing that's related with a relational database model that's called relational algebra, okay? So it would be looking after that also in uh, more details so in 1970s uh, ef cord and cj uh, did develop the relational model in 1979 oracle developed the first commercial relational database and 1980s uh, it started relational database model it started dominating the database model so today is the mostly widely and accepted used database model So relational uh, database model stores the data in simple set of relations, right? So it relations means tables. So it helps to store data less redundantly. Less redundantly. They are governed by the integrity rules. So they are governed by integrity rules. So relations are made up of tuples and attributes, though tuples are the rows and attributes are the columns. So a relation can be also said as a set of tuples. So now tuple is an unordered set of attribute values because the data we save in any tables, we need not save, the, save those data in any order, right? So if we have five columns, say ID, name, address, and email, uh, that column sequence could be represented in any order. First of all, we can represent name and then after ID, any way can be possible. So they have they are not ordered in any sorts of order. So integrity rules govern operations on the data and structures of the database. That means there are certain integrity rules that needs to be followed by all of the tables or data in the database. So for example, let's say if we want to save an email address, that email address needs to be unique, right? So a person without a name cannot exist. So if we are about to, okay, so, Sushmi, why are you raising your hand? Is there any problem? Do you have any question to ask? If not, you don't need to raise your hand, okay? Sushmi Mogar. Okay, integrity rules govern operations on the data and structures of a database. We already discussed about it. So this is the relational database terms first of all relations that's a two dimension tables so relations in the sense is doesn't mean that it's a relation between two persons it's it means in our database terms relation means tables okay so it's a two dimensional because we have rows and columns in another dimension one dimension is the rows vertical and horizontal so columns are the attributes rows are the tuples there is the term called keys and the relations between different integrity entities, the integrity rules between them and the query language used in that relational database. So the relational database stores data based on the relational model. Uh, relations are represented by two dimensional tables. Tuples are represented by rows. Attributes are represented by columns. Tables have unordered rows and columns. So each row in a table has the same set of columns. Each column in the table has the same data type means. Uh, let's say if we have a one row that save that has five columns, then another row cannot have six columns. Okay. 
all of the rows needs to have the same number of columns so each column in the date table has the same data type means each column in the table has the same data type means uh, if there is a column name phone number then uh, the data the data item in that one cell of that phone number should be number another should also be number another should also be number right or wrong what do you say about it if you are storing data of one type for example name name cannot be number right phone number cannot be any alphabetical characters like or uh, from a to z can there be any a to z for phone numbers no right so each column of the table must have the same data type So table columns and rows. So our relational database could store information about company employees in many tables, an employee table, a department table, and a salary table. For example, for a company, if they want to store, uh, create a, a database-driven applications, they might need an employee table, a department table to save the information about the department, uh, or probably a salary table to save the data about the salary of those staffs and also an employee table that needs to save all the information about the employees for example the name of the employee the address of that employee the uh, qualifications of that employee for example like, let's say that type of things so an employee table may have several columns like employee table may have an staff id his first name his or her first name surname or contact number so that employee table would be represented as such okay as you can see here we need to write down the table name or a relation name or a attribute name attribute name sorry a entity name and then a parenthesis we start the parenthesis or small braces then write down different attributes or the column names and close that parenthesis this is the way you can represent a entity an entity so and the instance of that entity that entity that employee table may have several rows right so the first row may have uh, employee id of staff id emp1 and the name of that is staff can be mandy the surname of that staff can be morel the contact number could be 3680 that could be an extension number right similarly another row may have another data uh, shown in this figure like employee 2 julia vernon 2161 so it's here's the another example a set of relations each containing a set of tuples or records so relations is also known as table and a tuple as a row right so uh, here is the is employee table we discussed about and here it's uh, shown as a table so here's the, uh, the id attribute staff id here another one first name then a surname and contact so it's a table or relations these are different columns or attributes and these are the values inside those columns and this would make one row and this would be one entity and this would be another row that should be another entity so here see this if this contact number is uh, what the number data type then all of these num should be numbers right all of these should be numbers if this row have if this row have four columns then this row also must have four columns we cannot uh, make a non-linear tables okay this table should be linear so all rows have the same columns each column has the same data type for example if we have id consists of alpha numeric characters both alphabet and numeric so this could then this both all should have the same types of data the first name is totally a string or variable characters then this all of these first names should be variable characters so there are uh, relational database schema so schema is a structure behind data organization so how those data are uh, organized within our uh, database that's called the schema so it's a visual representation of how different table relationships enables the schemas underlying business rules right there might be different entities for example if we are about to create a database driven application for a college management system then we need to have what department table that would have an id name and block number as its attribute we might have another entity student id name address department id right so 
this uh, I have underlined this ID because this is a primary key and I have underlined ID as a e student that's another primary key and this I a string is the foreign key uh, of the department this ID and this if department ID has different name but this department ID references to this so we have talked about this in our primary key and foreign keys we will be talking about it later also so every table must have one what every table must have one what answer me guys primary key yes every table must have one primary key column okay every row must have one primary key so there's another one student table staff table subject mark so they, he's uh, here these are some entities uh, for a college management system so this entity would indeed have see we have relationship between these entities also so this staff id is here in the subject right the subject would be taught by some staff so this mark or this result or let's say something we have subject id and student id so this subject id and student id comes from the subject table and student table right so the, these these are the different types of relationship between these different entities so relational database schema should show all of these things in details okay so that's the structure behind data organization so here you can see uh, uh, two images so here in the left side i have shown an entity relationship diagram this is called an entity relationship diagram and in my right side in this right side of this image you can see this is as a this as a relational database schema so that's this could be this schema could be made all a little bit better than this but however this is a, a relational database schema and this is a entity relationship diagram okay so there are uh, a lot of many types of keys okay so there are many types of keys so we need some to uniquely identify any record or tuple we must have one uh, we must every time you going to school for example let's say in your at your home you only had one, your name right you only had your name uh for example let's say if you have you are four siblings at your home with your cousins also they never gave you roll number at your home did they or not no no but but as once you arrived at a school from uh, kindergarten they started giving you roll number right so why because they want to uniquely identify you with some number so every record in our database relational database models or tables should be able to be identified by a unique number okay that's why we use keys so it's used to establish and identify relations between tables or relations so this there those kind of keys would also be used to identify relations between different relations uh, relationship between different relations so never get confused about these two words relationships and relations okay so relations simply refer to the tables relationships simply if refers to the association between two relations or tables so maybe a single attribute or a combination of more than one attributes so a key can be can be uh, made out of a single column or it could be made out a uh, mixing up or combining two different columns so this enforces in entity integrity of database that means that if we have one uh, unique item in every rows then that makes it clear that no two other entities would be same so that's called entity integrity so there are a lot of keys see uh, there are super key candidate key primary key composite key foreign key alternate key compound key and surrogate key so uh, i have uh, provided all those with the slides let's uh, discuss about those so a group of single or multiple keys which identifies row in a table is called a super key a uh, key may have additional attributes that are not needed for unique identification so a group of single or multiple keys so the if there are there could be many keys possible right let's say if uh, you have a phone number that phone number uh, everybody has different phone numbers right if you have a roll number everyone have a different roll number if you have an email address everybody have a different email address so 
those are a group of single or multiple keys which identifies rows in a table key may have additional attributes that are not needed for unique identifications so primary key is a column this is the most important okay this is most important because we need uh, to have one for every rows so it's a column or group of columns in a table that uniquely identify every row in that table it can be a duplicate uh it cannot be a duplicate okay so there cannot be any duplicate primary key for example i already discussed about it as you have you all of you have a unique role number that cannot be duplicate within the same class so that's called a primary key so candidate key all possible keys right so if there are uh, let's say i talked earlier that you can use your email address as an what primary key right so you can use your phone number as also in primary key though those are the possible keys so they are the candidate keys so this they, those can uniquely identify the topples in the table uh, so there are if you use one of those candidate keys as a primary key then rest of those all of those are the alternate keys so foreign key if we are using uh, primary key of one table uh, to real so the relationship between uh, two another table bringing that primary key from one table into another table that's called the foreign key so compound key we can uh, mix up two columns right we can mix up two columns and create a key so that's called a compound key we are trying to mix up two different columns and trying to create a key that would give us a compound key so composite key is similar to compound key uh, is a combination of two or more columns that unique identify rows in a table the combination of columns carrot is unique so composite key compound key uh, composite key is also a type of compound key uh, where we can use another tables that are not unique for example let's say if we have two tables for example uh, uh, every roll number should be generated like uh, let's say if it's a 2020 right so we will create a roll number starting from 2022 right if it's 2022 then we would create a roll number 2022 and then uh, for example if the badge is 02 second badge or third badge 03 and i didn't give number to 01 so we are using three different things to create the key right so the, those kind of keys are called. So surrogate key is an artificial key which aims to uniquely identify each record. It's called a surrogate key. These kind of key are unique because they are created when you don't have any natural primary key. So if we don't have any kind of natural primary keys, we can just create another table, another uh, ID, roll number. So you never had your own roll number, right? So they created a column called roll number that kind that could also be called as a surrogate key so what's a relational algebra so then let's talk about relational algebra so rest, relational algebra is a uh, procedural query language it's a mathematics that derives all those uh, structures of the relational database models so it takes instances of relations as input and gives occurrences of relations as output so if we so for relational algebra uh, let's say uh, 12 plus 13 right plus is an automatic operator right or wrong right so that's how relational algebra also has different types of operators so that takes so 12 plus 13 if we give 12 plus 13 that would give us 25 right so similarly if we give any input to uh, any relational algebra operators that would provide us some output so that uh, input that we would provide to any relational algebra would be the tables or relations right and the output also be some sorts of relations so there are various operations of relational algebra so they are performed recursively on relations and in inter intermediate results are also considered relations for example let's say if we say a 12 plus 13 inside a bracket multiplied by 15 then what would happen there would be b bottom as rules would be followed right so first of all the operations inside the bracket would be done that's the expression evaluations would be done so similarly we can just 
create some nested or compound relational algebra operations where uh, the re intermediate results would be also be considered as the relations and provided to the another operations so we'll be seeing that as an example so here are some example operations examples of the relational of uh, algebras so unitary relational operations are operations are uh, projection selection rename and then another one is relational algebra operations from shared theory union right difference intersection cartesian product and there are another binary relations operator so this unitary uh, relation operators what takes only one relations right so this union they need they use uh, that are derived from the shared theory like we did in the Venn diagram uh, in our school level so these are joint divisions join this one is completely new and interesting one and you should focus your interest more on this so first of all let's look at projection what's projection so is this is two bit portion arriving here at 730 so what's this projection so what do you understand just go and simply check the meaning of that word okay itself what's projection anyone give me the meaning of the word projection projection means to project to show okay so projection means showing something right so if there's a table uh, let's say if there should table here in your the uh, here you can see that here you can see right there is just me mugger on so what's being done over here and your profile picture so only your picture and your name has been projected over here right right so when you created your email address uh, you provided a lot of information over there when you sign up for your google account gmail account uh, what information have you provided there what were the informations you provided there or name phone number email address password what? But here in your uh, this uh, Google Classroom, your only your name and your profile picture have been projected, right? Right. So that's what it's it means. Okay. So projection. So though while signing up for the Gmail, you uh, the Google database saved all your informations like uh, roll number or something, address, your phone number, right? Uh, your uh, profile picture or something like that. But it only projected these two because right now we require only these two informations to be showed over here that's what it is with the projection also if we want to we if we have uh, let's say 30 columns in our database we cannot show we do not need to show all those data right so we need we may need to we may require to show only two columns or only five columns or whatever so that's done by the projection so it eliminates all attributes of the input relation but those mentioned in the projection list okay it means all attributes of the relation but those mentioned in the project list so if we we want to create a projection list and pro only show that uh, columns attributes defines a relations that contains a vertical subset of relations uh, what it does is it projects uh, the subset of that relations okay subset of that relations helps to keep specific columns from a relation and discuss the other columns is the same definition so if there's an example let's see over here we have this table called customer id uh, sorry customer table where we have in our first column we have customer id second column we have customer name and the third column we have status active so these are different columns we have four rows of different datas right so if we want to project only customer name and status and don't care about the customer id we can uh, show that as here you can see we have this projection symbol that uh, looks like a pie symbol and here is the customer name status and here is the parenthesis and customers right so here the projection of customer name and status will give us this table from this input table 
we generated this intermediate table this is also a relation from this input relation we generated a intermediate relation by project by using this projection operator this projection operator this is a uh, subscript over here in this projection pi okay so here customer name and status and this uh, customer's table relation inside this parenthesis whose project of this project of this intermediate customer table so here you can write the that as an this uh, as such for a relational algebra and the same thing would be written as uh, this select customer name comma status from customers tables as a sql query okay is it clear guys yes sir okay so we already discussed this thing in our class right so this is just a review of that class uh, because we were unable to study these slides so selection see what is selection we projected that right now we can do a selection so but selection always requires a what criteria of selection for example uh, there are 13 students right there are 13 students and out of you uh, college need college may need to select few of you to go to any programs or uh, for scholarships right so that would be selection but that would require some criteria similarly here also selection requires some criteria used uh, for selecting a subset of the tuples according to a selection condition select tuples that satisfy a given predicate predicate means a predicate is some statements that is either true or false nothing other than true or false so uh, that is represented by this sigma symbol mm, and here it's a p predicate on the relation which one which one relations and this p consists of a predicate or the selections criteria so our uh, this sigma is the symbol right so p is the propositional logic and this is the predicate so we'd be looking this as an for an example here you can see within your subjects within your subjects also you have different subjects you are studying different subjects in this semester right so right now you what so which subject you are studying is database right so how can we select that so use this symbol sigma subject name equals to database in the subscript of this sigma and from which table you are going to select it which from which relation you are going to select is written in the, inside this parenthesis as subject so if we if you want to select the subject informations of the uh, rows all of those rows containing the subject name as database then you can just select this okay that query could be expressed as such in your relational algebra so here you can see uh, for example for this query for this relational algebra we have a database sql query like such select uh, which not database query okay this is not selects only select my mistake while creating this there's no select query okay this is select okay guys you got it it should only be select not select so this select subject underscore name from subjects relation where subject underscore name equals to data so this means this condition would always come after where clause okay select subject name from subjects where subject name equals to database this is not a query this is simply an explanation of this i haven't shown the query over it this is some simply an explanation of this relational algebra but if you just remove this s from here this could be converted into a sql query also so similarly we can use uh, you can use we can use different operators over here and or right greater than or is smaller than in this condition also for example if we want to select some uh books or tutorials that has the topic database from from the tutorials table and written by ram then what we can do is select uh, topic equals to database 
and author is equals to RAM. So do not get confused by this query select and this selection. These are two different things. This select means that project. So this sub name is we are projecting this sub name. We are not selecting this sub name. But here we say that this is select. Right. So that select would come after this where clause inside this database. So this relational algebra could be represented uh, in a what query SQL query. So <clears throat> so this relational algebra selects tuples from tutorials where the topic is database and author is RAM. So this is just a simply and not a query. Okay, this is simply an explanation of this selections query so here we have a table called customer id customer uh, and so many one two three four five six columns with seven rows each seven rows each so what we can do is uh, if we so here you can see uh, there are a lot of other data also right so this only these seven of these rows have been shown so there's country called germany right so here we have customer one from Germany, customer two from Mexico, customer three from Mexico, right? So we want to find out uh, all those customers from the country Germany. Okay, guys. If we want to find out the rows, find out the rows of all the customers from Germany, what to, how can we do that? What would be our selection criteria? Just tell me. if we want to see all the rows see all the names of the customers who are who lives in country germany how can we do that how can we express that in our relational algebra see the selection criteria would be country equals to germany right or wrong yeah. right the country yeah, that's all right the country is equals to germany should be the so here Simply, if we can see, you can see over here the selection criteria country equals to Germany uh, for the relation customers, right? So, this is only selection criteria. But to display this, to display this, what we can we need to do is project it, right? So, you can select Sun and projections in a combined way. That's if we want to see the customer names and the city of those people living in germany then we can use that we can use a combined selection projection operator in such a way so this is a pi customer name comma city so only customer name and comma city these two tables only these two columns needs to be displayed so that's why this is not this is what what is this we are projecting customer name and city right and we are selecting all those customers from this country Germany. So this is selection criteria. So the similar, the same, this same relational algebra is represented in a SQL query as such. Select customer name, comma city from customers relation where country equals to Germany. So never get confused that see this selection and this selection and this select is different. Okay. This select is this project uh, it would have been better if they would read project customer name from city right it would have been better if the uh, database programmers or designers uh, wrote here project instead of select because uh, the select criteria is here that's after this where clause see select customer name and city where does this customer name and city comes from this comes from this projection of these columns. We are projecting the columns, customer name and city. But in our relation algebra, we have using this project symbol to project. But in our SQL query, we use this select keyword. Okay, It would have been better if they would have written this as a project. So don't get confused about this. Okay, I think you got it, guys. Did you or did you not? Okay, Galbu, you are understanding it or not? 
Galbu? Galbu? Bujay ki bujay na Galbu? Kha Galbu ko sound aaya na? Galbu ko mic ke chala chahe na aaja. Bujay ra hola hai last man hai. Amle yo bhi lagar yo bhi lagar. Bujay ra. Not exactly. Okay. Let's continue. It's easy, right? It's the database is the easiest subject of all among all of your subjects. So here we can just rename the table also. So it's a unary operation, and unary operation used for renaming attributes of relations. So if you want to rename a table A as a table, uh, the attribute B of a relation A, we'll rename the attribute B of relation by A. So if you want to relation any attribute table of uh, attribute columns of at a you can just simply do this uh, this is probably not required so there are other types of operators also right so here we have another operator union operator so if we have two relations uh, r and yes so if we find the union of these two what happens so all of the tuples would be included includes all tuples that are in tables r or in yes so also eliminates duplicate tuples so union operator would also duplicate the eliminates the duplicate tuples for a union operation to be valid the following condition must hold rn must rns must be the same number of attributes so rn must have the same attributes attribute domains need to be compatible duplicate tuples should be automatically which means if we want to find a union between two tables <coughs> excuse me both of those tables need to have same columns right else how can we find the union so if we want to find the union so as you can see we have table a and table b table a have column one column two table b have column one column three uh, the row one is similar but row two row two is different so a union would give us a union b would give us uh, column one and column two with one two one and one three so these two these two are duplicates so we'd have only one so if we want to find the difference between those two we can just simply use the difference operator so it's say if we have one table that consists of apple orange strawberry lemon and avocado avocado uh, and another table with lemon avocado grapefruit and apricot if we would different subtract p from a then we'd get only those values that are unique in b that's the difference so intersection is simply something that we get that we have would have common in between these subjects so if we had two subject uh, tables for subject and subject two then uh, if we want to find out what are the common subjects in between them then we can simply find out the intersection between them we, as we know that intersection gives us the things that are common in both of them so the important one is here the most important one because only then unless we will understand this we will not be able to understand other joints or something so here's the cartesian so it's shown by a x or multiplication symbol so cartesian simply means uh, if we have a tester and a variety for example this these are the um, let's be let be this this might this example might deal with uh, food science here these are the name of the or identifier uh, identification number of some testers and the here are the variety so if uh, lila uh, or this one test is all this this one tests all this this tests all this this sarah test all of these then what we will give this so lila would have a combination with these three rows right and mark would have a combination with these three rows and Luke could also have combination with these three three rows of varieties Sarah would also test these three varieties. So that's how it's shown, right? That's how it's Cartesian product is. So we have one, two, three, four columns, four rows over here. We have one, two, three rows, rows over here, right? Four into three would be, four times three would be 12, right? So there would be 12. So here, Lila has, is combined with all these three varieties. Mark is combined with all these three varieties. This is called Cartesian product. If you, but for the Cartesian product, you need not have the same what same columns, right? You can have different columns. 
we can have different columns the cartesian table is simply multiplying this so it's a combination of both it's a multiplication of both this one would be combined with all of these three it doesn't matter if lila has might or might not have, might or might not have tested all these things it doesn't matter but if we are about to find a cartesian between these two tables the result would be the combination of both these ta two ta both tables so similarly <clears throat> uh here's another one join as you can see over here we have a customer table uh sorry this one is an order table and this one is a customer table right so just take a look at these column names so this order id 1038 belongs to a customer id 2 this order id 10308 belongs to customer id 2 and order date is this but from this customer id how would we be able to uh, send that package to the right location delivery location of that customer we need to uh, join the two tables and need to see where those customer id2 lives or what's the name of this customer id2 what's the phone number of that customer id2 because we as we come earlier as we knew earlier from the normalization or why we cannot save all those data in the same table right so orders should have another table and customers should have another table so simply here you can see that uh if we find out join between these we can join these two tables together if we can join these two tables together we'll get this kind of table see over here we have order id right 10308 and customer name and a trujillo something like that so order id is from this table order table whereas this customer name is from this customer table but we can join this table and find a intermediate table that would consist one column from this order table and another table from this customer table so that's called join that's how we can use join so there are different types of joins so the use of the join you already know it don't do you have you understood this thing you got it or not yes sir we got it okay we can simply join two tables so here over here how can we do that see see this orders table can be joined with a customers table okay here it's a order date also in this column okay simply you can see there this orders tables would be because let's see we need to see one information from this order table we need to see another row from this customer table so uh, what uh, what we need to do is orders and customers need to be joined so this thing you can see that uh, it looks like the domoro of domoro right so or uh, this is called join operator you, this is a symbol of join operator so orders would be uh, orders and customers would be joined together by a common attribute here you can see we have this customer id right in this order table and this customer id in this customers table this customer id in this order table and this customer id in this customer table what is the what what are these this is primary key in customer table right and this is foreign key in customer id so so orders dot customer id so the customer id column from the our order tables is equals to customers id customers tables customer id if those equality operator this joins these two columns and this gives us the what result so that could be written in sql as such select orders dot order id what do you want to display over here what do you want to project over here customers dot customer name you want to project the order id you want to project the customer name and you want to project the order date orders dot order date from the orders table from from where orders right from orders and you need to join that orders 
or us join customers or us join customers on what on the matching columns on the matching columns orders dot customer id and cost equals to that should be equals to customer dot customer id so this is the selection this is how we can represent our join in relational algebra and this is how we can represent our join in sql query so i hope you understood it so there are different types of joins okay so there are uh, basically inner joins only those <clears throat> topos that satisfy the matching criteria matching criteria are included where the rest are excluded right so uh, we have another join along with topos that satisfy the matching criteria we also include some or all topos that do not match the criteria so there are uh, theta join equation and natural join and in, in outer join we have left outer join right outer join and full outer join so that let's first of all look at the picture over here as you can see this is the pictures uh, this should be what this is left join right so it's a left right so it's a left side is shown as the red so it's a left join it's a left outer join so this is a full outer join this is also outer join okay this we have the inner join this we have the right join this we have the right join these types of joints so let's look at the different types of joints okay so theta join so here we can see here is the in this join symbol we can subscript use uh, this theta as a subscript uh, this is a general case of join operation so can use any conditions in the selection criteria for example in our selection criteria we can use any conditions for example greater than if we want to find out something greater than or smaller than or and or so we can use all any of the conditions in this types of theta join but in this equi join we can only use this equals to operator okay this is called the equi join so in our natural join if we have some attributes common between them then that could only be that's called as a natural join for example here we have an employee table and another one is a department table so natural join could be used only if we have a common table so we have an employee have a department name and this department table has a department name right so if we join this together, this is called a natural join. Okay, similarly, left outer join. If we have an employee table and a department table, see over here, uh, left means, left is employee is left right now, right? So the symbol, just take care of this symbol, just see the symbol. So it's left, the, the dash to two hyphens are added to the left side of this table. So what this means is, we need to have all data items from the a okay we need to have all data items from the a for example if we are joining left joining left outer joining employee and department here you can see uh department we have sales and productions right sales and productions right only sales and productions department are there in this department table but there are so if we have the matching columns then sales we may have we may need to show only sally and sally and harriet right so this would this finance harry and this finance this actually won't match with any of this but instead what happens here we have only productions right so in this table after the result we don't have a production but we have all of these here you can see we don't have any production we have all of these and if we do if the columns not not matching columns would be left null Left particles is a pay, Aunupore, right particular now than a boy of an hojiko. Your production song a mass when you couldn't even sign any. So it's a very so. Left pretty so the production song mass when you couldn't even sign any money. See, guess the production one, Miname sign airnos. Left goes a soppa. Your finance mass got in a type any finance so. Thor a manager to yes, Kukulumko, manager with Haman also. Hey, they were left particles of pay. Similarly, right. Join 
the symbol is such and right join also consists of oh, now you can see there's a sales and productions right so the production would column have this and this sales column matches only one only to these two tables so the left would be here but the right won't be here so we don't have this harry finance right we don't have this george finance we don't have this team execute because this data does not does not match with any of this so must include this so this is what right outer join is so full outer join means both of this it, if it matches or not here it's have execute also executive also column also it have production column also so but if there are no data they would that would be left null so production charles from this department table right production charles from this department table but there are no name and employee id that would be null so executive uh one one two three team from this table but there is no manager for that that would be null so this is what full outer join would be so these are the summary so these are some different queries how we can create those uh, uh convert those joints operations into sql joints so here is another web link also you can just go and visit these links to find out more about the database management systems so do you have any questions guys regarding today's lecture if you have any confusions you can simply ask me have i uploaded those in our classroom or not have I uploaded those slides in our classroom? No. Do we even have a classroom uh, for the no, database? Sir. We don't have a classroom for the database, right? Okay, I'll create one. Do we have another class? yes sir yes sir we have okay first of all let me create a class uh, and add you all over there class name it's tbms right so it's 2022 Oops, Okay, let's stop the recording for now. So that would be all for today. Just stay over there to tell me your names so that I can add you in your classrooms.